Man. That was crazy. There was a lot of twists and turns that this story took that I was not expecting. It was very surprising. And a lot of unconventional methods of storytelling that I would expect from a gacha game of, of all things. I still believe that this particular arc was really good in like in the storytelling as far as like, you know, what's happening, the stakes and the many different characters that came into play. I do feel that some people, some characters, uh, their role kind of felt unfulfilled. Where's Sparkle? Is Sparkle going to disappear and reappear later on? Is she going to be like, like Sampo, where he just comes in every now and then to just be a weird wild card in the story? I also feel like bringing the Sienjo in, that did kind of feel like left field maybe they should have planted that story device like earlier like in 2.1 uh i do but either way i think that's that's crazy fan service to, to to have them come in i find it hard to believe considering we were in the dreamscape so what did all these the all these cloud knights just like all go to bed they're like ah oh, tap us in we're all going in black swan did mention that she has unconventional means to kind of cross into the dreamscape. But if she is the reason they were all able to get in, that's a testament to the kind of power that she has as a mem memo keeper. Flaws aside, I still really enjoyed the direction they went. I feel Penacone was very refreshing after spending so much time at the Sienjo. Like in comparison, our time here in Penacone was really brief. The Sanjo felt like forever. It felt like we were there for like six months. I imagine after this big arc, we're probably gonna go into like little side stories here in Panacone. Maybe develop Robin a little more, which I'm looking forward to. I do want to find out what happened to Firefly. That's another thing. Why did they have to bench Firefly? We had all these forces coming into play to take on the big baddie. We got Gallagher and his gang. We got Firefly. Well, I'm venturing until he died. Acheron, Black Swan, like this this could have been a really cool kind of coming together. Like if Acheron was there, Acheron would have just cut his head off. <laughs> so maybe they had to bench some characters, but Firefly? Really? We spent this whole time, this arc is all about her. And at the very end, they bench her? Why? Whatever script that she has to do, they hint at her like, you know, that time is running out for her, I guess, which is very sad to hear. This, this char the character deaths in this arc are flip-flopping. First Robin died, then Firefly died, and then they came back, and now Misha's dead, apparently. Adventurine, I'm assuming for now he's dead. Who knows if he'll come back. I do appreciate the risk that they took with this storyline. Definitely for sure. It makes for a much more compelling storytelling. My biggest gripe is the fluff and the filler that is within here. I'm all for like extending the story. I, I, I'm not saying that a long, a longer story is bad, but the way they're, they were just kind of being overindulgent with all the, the shit that Sunday was yapping about, it loses meaning and, it, and its impact. It's the same way with Avengerine. I was compelled by Aven Avengerine's story and the fact that they gave him a backstory with the uh, you know, as Kakavasha, that whole sequence in the theme park where he was talking to his two other selves, that one dragged way too long. And by that point, I was exhausted and I didn't care anymore. And that's that's detrimental to the story. The pacing needs to be suitable to keep it constantly going upwards. If you delay it too long, it loses impact. So we thought Sunday died because of Gallagher, but it turns out he, he dropped into the shadow realm of Penacone's dreamscape, right? And his character, when talking with everyone there, with Robin and with the Gallagher, it seemed like he was going one direction. And then he had this character switch when he was walking around with Robin, which I felt was very unnatural and not organic. I thought the Dream Master was going to be the final baddie. It was kind of like a subversion of expectations when Sunday was like, nah, I'm going to do it. Thinking about it too much, I feel like it, it kind of takes away from it. But yeah, that's my whole spiel about this freaking arc. I can't be the only one that came to the end of this story feeling exhausted by the fluff. Uh, I think that's all the thoughts I got. I appreciate you guys listening to my rant. Let's continue the story. 
The crew was defeated in the battle against Sunday. Everyone in Panacone failed, and no one survived. Wait, did we? Did, am I still in a dream? It is Inception. It. What the fuck? This is exactly what I was asking for. Yes, yes. This is the hype. This is the hype I was looking for. Oh, let's fucking go. This guy up. I'm so happy right now. Let's go. Let's go. I'm gonna cry. This is so good. Okay, let's ulti. <laughs> I'm actually crying, guys. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm sorry I doubted this patch. It's still long with a lot of fluff. Every time you break the layer of uh, enemy toughness, you gain a certain collective shield. <laughs> the music! I thought it would be tough to beat Wildfire. Holy shit. That's the benefit of having a VTuber. You can't see tears unless I toggle it. <laughs> Alright. Let's go, chat. 